Hello, everybody. Lewis Karras with Tactical Response, joined by Adam Healy, uh, one of our alumni, uh, good friend. I'd, yeah. I'd like to consider you a good friend of mine anyway. I, I'm, I'm on board with that. Tim, right. maybe not. Yeah. Lewis, Jay, I'm on, I'm on that team. Fair. All right. Yep. Um, so we recently went and trained together at a Centrifuge VCQB class. Yeah. And had a great time. I'm sure they've already seen some of the B-roll of us tearing it up. And so we just wanted to deliver to you guys an after action report of that class, what they can expect yeah. going to take that class, what they're going to need to bring with them, that sort of stuff. It's interesting. I just had a class from Kevin Dixie. Mm. He certified... Uh, Joey and myself as USCCA instructors and he made a great point in that class when he goes and takes another person's class he's very conscious to do things the way that instructor is teaching them mm -hmm. and he said that it has led o over the years to a bunch of times where other instructors are like, hey, that guy's not really all that, you know, mm -hmm. like that sort of stuff. And it brought me back to thinking about myself taking VCQB because watching the footage of me taking VCQB, I'm like upset with myself for not being better. At the same time, I'm now looking at it in hindsight i'm trying to do the things their way so it's yeah. not going to look as smooth and and as crisp as if i were doing it my way that i have tons of reps doing so i just thought that that was a, a cool thing that kd brought up if you are being a good student you may not look like you're performing to the best of your abilities. Well, by definition, you're being a student and you're learning. You're mm -hmm. learning something new. And um, I think the Centrifuge team, Chase, you know, Blake, the crew out there, did a great job. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, materially different mechanics, weapon handling, manual of arms versus the way TAC Response does it or you know other places. And so I think like what um, what you mentioned is spot on, right? Like you are learning a new way of doing something. So it's going to be slower. You're going to make mistakes. You may mess up something. Um, but I, I think that's just part of like the learning curve. Yeah. And running everything through that filter Yeah, and, and trying to create new pathways versus one that is like well paved. Yeah. And you're doing it with like loaded guns. Yes. So like you're, you're trying to be safe, right? So it's right. learning in real time with loaded guns around vehicles mm -hmm. with other people mm -hmm. that you haven't necessarily trained with before putting all that together. It, it's going to look a little choppy. Right. Like I think maybe one of the runs that felt the smoothest, I'm not sure if we have this one on, on film was the one where we kind of got stopped midway. <laughs> which one was but, that uh well we had we have different length arms you and i oh yes and, yes <laughs> yes yeah. uh so i guess we'll we'll get into that here in a, in a moment guys uh take a second like like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not a member already we do appreciate it uh, let's get right into expectations if you're going to be showing up to one of these classes, what you're going to need to bring with you and what you should be prepared for. Okay. Um, so I think I've got my list and you okay. probably got a list. Yep. Um, I'll focus mostly probably on like gear stuff. Cause I think table stakes, especially for anyone watching this is like, come with an open mind. Don't mm -hmm. be an asshole. Come squared away. Um, but yeah, I think probably my biggest takeaway and the only other class I think I've ever used knee pads for what well, is a contractor class. Mm -hmm. Usually it's like, eh, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Tough it up. You know, it'll mm -hmm. be, it'll be fine. Um, but I would probably recommend knee pads for sure for the centrifuge VCQB class. Yes. Um, I was sore afterwards. Yes. I, I brought them because it, it stated that they were ma mandatory to be worn. Yeah. I did not put them on because I was going to be tough and well, 
if they don't stop me from doing it, then I don't have to wear them. And yeah. it was a regrettable decision. I agree. I mean, yeah. we're not 20 years old anymore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think it's like the normal stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, you come squared away, you come ready to train, um, show up early, have your food, have lunch, have snacks, have mm-hmm. all the stuff that you need to spend. And they are long days with them. Yes. To spend a full day at the range. This wasn't a, we kind of start at 930 and we kind of leave mm-hmm. at three. This was, you know, eight to five, eight yeah. to six. This and was it- long days. You mentioned bring lunch, bring snacks. I think this class in particular, uh, Chase Chase did a great job of delivering information. And like we talk about our classes being fire hoses of knowledge, and it was it was the same with the center centrifuge class. That said, we typically give a half hour yeah. to an hour for lunch where if you've brought sandwiches or you've brought deli meat you can make a sandwich for vcqb on the go yeah have your stuff in line if you if sandwich meat is what you're thinking make your sandwiches the night before like yeah you you need to be able to eat kind of grazing throughout the day so if it's power bars that you can do that with or whatever snack jerky constantly be on top of that because you'll get a few minutes to recharge mags slam some water and yeah. maybe take a few bites of something if it's not prepared ready to go you're gonna be you, there's there's no formal break for for chow right it, it is a drill after drill and our class wasn't small i mean yeah. it was 20 people mm-hmm. and that even with that number of head count it was high tempo. Like it, there yep. wasn't time to sit down, crack a Gatorade, eat a whole sandwich. Like it was on the move. Mm-hmm. Um, and we took it, it was still hot out. Like now it's yep. like freezing down here. <laughs> um, but the other thing, and I've always, I know you're kind of a fan of them. I think I look good with a tan. So I've never really focused too much on like UV protection. Mm-hmm. But those UV shirts with the hoods mm-hmm. are a lifesaver because the range we were on up in Indiana, Bedford range 88, 88 mm-hmm. range, something like that. It's Blake's place. Um, there is no shade. Right. Like, it is hot. Yeah. And I was going to say like a stool. Yeah. Throw that on your gear list. Sun sun shelters 10 by 10s yeah you can leave those at home for this class chances are you're not going to have time to get back there play the shade the way it's falling you know what i mean there's just not much downtime at all it is nice to be able to sit on something i had my tripod stool that i was able to just whip out sit on for a few minutes yeah. while I'm loading mags. So if you're going to sit on your cooler or whatever the case may be, have something where you can let your regs, legs rest for a minute, but you're not necessarily going to have time for setting up your full tent and yeah. becoming comfortable. It, it, it's a big boy class for sure. And mm-hmm. I think not just in like the prep and the being able to um, kind of run on the range for that many of hours across a day, um, but also the curriculum, right? Like you mm-hmm. mentioned fire hose earlier. It is a, there's a lot of science and math that they talk about um, for the first couple hours of day one. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of video, there's a lot of game tape that they kind of go through, shootings of various varieties. And there's a lot of information to consume around like ballistics, a lot of information to consume around different new, t- different techniques. So mm-hmm. there's a lot there too. Mm-hmm. So that's, that that lets everybody know what what they should be coming into class with what do you think biggest takeaway of the class for you um <laughs> like we'll go macro and then yeah start going for i would some say micro. the biggest takeaway is uh, well, maybe there's two big takeaways. Okay. One is we need to get Chase and Tim Morris on camera together. Yes, and just let and that's got to be that... like Uber Patreon <laughs> level, and just like let it roll. Yes. Um, so that's definitely that needs to happen at some point. Yeah. Um, because peas in a pod. Um, that those two dudes. Yeah, um, them co-teaching a, a class. I wonder what Chase's level of shotgun. 
now I, I don't know but I, it would be fun it would be it would be great to have those guys out on the range it would be fun to have them do a podcast as well <laughs> yeah um like those of you who've trained with us and enjoyed your time with tim if you go to a <laughs> centrifuge class right there's a a thing that used to happen here where people would kind of be deflated mm. if they got Tim instead of Yeager, sure, right? Sure. But then over time, everyone realizes like, I'm going to have Tim in class. I'm going to get the knowledge and have a great time. Yeah. Perfectly, perfectly good to go. Like we did not meet Will Petty. We did not. Will during not this class. And I, I don't think I missed out on anything from centrifuge. Yeah, I, I would agree. But kind of to your point or to your question, um, what was the biggest thing? I think the, they think about fighting in and around vehicles very differently than other places. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of along that vein, I would say two big takeaways. One is like the ballistics piece around mm -hmm. vehicles. Like vehicles are actually made pretty well, most vehicles. Mm -hmm. And the idea of a vehicle being a bullet magnet, I think is old school, 15 or 20 year old philosophy, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, even unarmored vehicles, right? Like mm -hmm. they're going to stop and absorb some number of rounds. So I think there was a lot of kind of interesting discussion, a lot of interesting um, practical application um, through kind mm -hmm. of some of their demos around that. That was probably my biggest takeaway. Mm -hmm. um, I think it took us, what, a hundred rounds of green tip yep. to get through a B pillar. Yeah. Yeah. So a hundred rounds through the B pillar. Through both B pillars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so if if you're using the car correctly, it mm -hmm. can absorb quite a bit of damage for you. Now, a hundred rounds, and we're talking about shot in a group like this. Yeah, two right? range group, yeah. So just continuing to try and send it through to kind of jackhammer a hole. Now, if you just kind of sprayed, mm -hmm. how many sure, are going to come doors. through just on the outside of that B pillar and how many does it take to get through right there? So what's your width, but comparisons of the pillar widths to mm -hmm. armor. Yeah. You've got something there. Yeah. So that was a, that was a big takeaway. I think it's, um, it was helpful to see it practically. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, overall, uh, the, it just, I think shifts your mindset a little mm -hmm. bit in terms of like, how you want to use a vehicle, put it between you and the fight, the, uh, the, any type of like issue that occurs. Mm -hmm. um, I think the force on force at the end was good. That was awesome. Yeah. That, that I really enjoyed. Yeah. It was interesting seeing the difference between starting at the back of the car versus the front of the car. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't remember the exact numbers. It, it's been a, it's been a minute, but um, the last drill that gets run is force on force, one on one around a car. Mm -hmm. um, somebody starts at the front, somebody starts at the back. I think it was six out of seven or something yeah, like that, seven out nine of out of 10 yeah. or something like that. If you started at the front, you won because of the standoff of the hood. Is that right? No, no it, it was, was the, the rear. rear. It was the rear. Yeah. Cause because the standoff of the hood gets you away from the pillars. Right. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So starting at the rear is a huge advantage, um, fighting around vehicles. Yeah. That was another, a big takeaway I took from that force on force, which again, I love that drill, mm -hmm. the setup of it. A huge takeaway I took was the the need for being able to remedy malfunctions without looking at your gun. Because mm. a number of people, sim guns, UTM guns, they malfunction more regularly than than your carry gun. And a number of people got sucked into this. Yeah, absolutely. And that allowed maneuver their opponent mm -hmm. to get around and basically just end it with ease. So, yeah. And I think it was a combination too of going down and then standing up. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you're, you're starting to expose yourself through the windows and yeah. all the windows by this point in the class are shot out. So the SIM guns are shooting through the cars and um, yeah, it's, it is a, it's a good point. It, yeah. It is a good point. Like it's like dry practice, practice malfunction clearance until you can do it and reloads, until you can do that stuff without having to look at it yeah. again if if situation dictates and you have the time and you steal a glance at something that's different mm 
mm-hmm. than training yourself to yeah, get down. get sucked into it. So keep working on those skills, make them subconscious. This way you can just get the gun running while you're worrying about yeah. things you should be. Uh, so yeah, that that was a great takeaway from there. I think my biggest takeaway from the class was the the way that they explain the system one versus ah, system yeah. two, which system one being stuff that you can do automatically and system two requiring mental bandwidth. And I guess that dovetails nicely into what I was just saying. The more things that we can automate and get into system one, the more free we are to deal with the system two problems. And I, I really liked their explanation and they kept going back to that as an idea and questioning us, okay, so here's the problem and we need to do this, this, and this, which of those things are system one versus system two. And I, I thought that that was a great way to teach stuff. And it also gives you that goal of getting stuff from yeah. system two into system one muscle memory around yeah. it yeah mm-hmm. um yeah to include back to your earlier point around things on film sometimes looking a little choppy mm-hmm. uh it's getting out of the vehicle mm-hmm. right like should be system one should be autopilot i get out of the vehicle getting out of the vehicle their way mm-hmm. was i think new to both of us and mm-hmm. how they wanted us to do it how they wanted us to put the gun and hands and this and all all mm-hmm. of those different things so um it's you know you, you take if you know in order to get to what what you want in two days using their um you know using how they do it and moving that into system one takes some time takes some effort yeah. you really got to focus yeah. like they're they're very specific and again it's a very data-driven class but they're very specific on how they want you to do certain things because mm-hmm. again it's lots of folks live ammo vehicles moving around and it's it can be a little bit chaotic Mm -hmm. some of those drills and it's funny because in class in our classes i will tell students that specifically like slow down Mm. you're trying to go too fast i i'd rather you do it correctly and in a class like this that is going to challenge you as well as teach you new things it is hard to do and it's like adrenaline gets pumping yeah heart rate gets yeah. amped yeah so i i need to be i need to remember that feeling because i tell people to fight it yeah and then i had trouble fighting it it's, myself it's, it's it happens right like in the heat of the moment mm-hmm. it's easy to have like objectivity being 10 feet away and out of the situation yeah. mm-hmm. when you're in the situation you know blood pressure gets up a little bit heart rate gets up adrenaline gets up you're wanting to yeah. look cool in front yeah. of everyone. Ricky Bobby shows up yeah. like right over your shoulder. But yeah. You, you don't want to mess up. I mean, I think the entire class was comprised of like all good folks. Mm-hmm. We didn't have any safety issues. Um, it was a good cross section of like local law enforcement, federal law enforcement and civilian. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a good cross section, but everyone was a shooter. Like everyone was pretty good. So you don't want to, you don't want to look bad in front of that crew. Right. Okay. So to give you guys an overview of, the class will break it down day by day. So Adam's already mentioned that we started day one in the classroom, some very good learning points, teaching points. Mm -hmm. I think most of the videos we saw with the exception of one was, were all law enforcement. Uh, That sounds right. Is that about right? And then we saw one just kind of natural, use of cover <laughs> where we it did. was like all oh, yeah. all bad guys there wasn't it was a good bad guys guy. shooting bad guys yeah and yeah and we saw some very natural uh survival caveman instincts of caveman bullets in- are flying yes. so we get behind the engine <laughs> yeah I yeah mean, and it it seemed to work for at least that one bad guy <laughs> it, it did he seemed to survive um but it's interesting because like you, you say all law enforcement i think that's also important to note mm-hmm. is centrifuge by their own marketing as a law enforcement centric training mm-hmm. company they do offer open enrollment classes but mm-hmm. they're few and far between um so if you can get a class slot you should yes um but 
they are skewed very heavily in terms of like their data collection, mm -hmm. the stats that they use, and also I would say the just like the, the way that they're training you. Mm -hmm. It is very centric towards kind of law enforcement applications. Yes. So know that going in. There's tons to learn that can be applied in other walks of sure. life. But this is not the vehicle class where you're going to practice getting a car seat out of the back seat as Correct. you're bailing out. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then we moved on to the range. Do you remember how we started off? I think there was some baseline shooting that we did. Yeah, I think that's pretty expected, right? Um, before we start running around vehicles and shooting guns, do the let's just get online and shoot some guns. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, you know, pretty straightforward. Got out to the range. It was a nice range facility. Um, it was again Bedford, Indiana. Um, there's other classes that they host out there, so mm -hmm. worth checking them out. They're good folks, and. Um, just don't shoot any of the cows. Apparently, there's some yes. like, award-winning cows in that farm area. Um, but yeah, so got out to the range, got everybody online, geared up, and um, got to it. The I think probably half the class was shooting more like off-duty mode or concealed mm -hmm. or kind of CC, you know CCW mode. Yep. And the other half it was, was shooting you know duty gear, kitted out. Yep. Good spread in terms of that stuff. I thought. Uh, one of the drills that I really liked in those beginning warm-ups, if you will, was the, like, how to fall. Yeah. Right? They know that there's a good chance that at some point during the fight, you may end up on the ground or going to the ground. So Chase did a good job breaking that down. I love nuance. Yeah, like you would. When I'm, when I'm learning. And so he was able to break that down really well and show the best, most efficient way to either keep your gun in play or mm -hmm. get your gun into play should you be on the ground. Yeah, you know what I thought was interesting is I don't think Chase and Sonny know each other, but there was a lot of similarities, I think, to kind of how Sonny shows you how to do that and, mm. what, and what Centrifuge does. So there's, I think it's just, the body mechanics only work so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like in this class, the way that he walked you through it was, I, I think, good. And uh, also, again, knee pads. Um, like there's a lot of getting on the ground yeah. and there's a lot of getting on the ground very quickly. Mm -hmm. And gloves, uh, we did not mention earlier, but like I did put a piece of glass through my palm okay. on day one. So can't can't go wrong protecting yourself from that sort of stuff. There's a lot of glass and steel when you start putting holes in vehicles. Yeah, especially if it's a range that's continuously used for yeah. a vehicle class. There's going to be shards of things that aren't gravel. Like, yeah. my mentality was, uh, I go down on the ground on the gravel all the time, and we've got shell casings on the range, but mm -hmm. there's things with funnier corners that break off of vehicles. So yeah. uh, protect yourself. Speaking of breaking off vehicles, the... Uh, that was maybe another good takeaway was uh, unlocking that that mm -hmm. column. Yeah, that, there was a lot of questions on that when that post went up on on the Instagram. Yeah, it, it was so for those of you that saw it, there we're moving vehicles around the range, right? And they're all salvage vehicles, so we're pushing them. Mm -hmm. Well, one of them we couldn't get the steering column unlocked, so apparently I didn't know this. Yeah, you, you put a you put a twelve gauge slug through the key. Yeah. locking mechanism, and it breaks the lock on the steering column. Yeah. Definitely not getting the key in it again, but um, it yeah. allowed us to move it around the range. Yeah, long-term health of the car, not great. I mean, yeah. long-term health of anything that gets a 12-gauge slug into it, yeah. probably not great. But it it was a very fast, quick way of getting that car where we needed it. So mm -hmm. it was kind of cool to do the whole breacher up thing and yeah. and get it moving. I wonder if that works on like Russian tanks. Is that how they're getting them to move around? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lock steering column? I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, anyhow, yeah. So we um, so did went through kind of the how to fall thing and mm -hmm. then kind of got into it. Yeah. Um, and and then kind of ran pretty hard mm -hmm. uh, around vehicles, in and around vehicles, some solo stuff, mm -hmm. some teamwork also. Um, you know, it was interesting. The I, I saw some video recently in the last probably week of a large um, law enforcement agency here in like middle Tennessee area um, that has actually incorporated the centrifuge um, final drill into their basic academy. Cool. 
Um, so they are changing things Very cool. for the positive, Very I think, cool, across yeah. the country. Um, it was an interesting video. Somebody was like, yeah, check this out. And I was like, wait, I know that drill. Yeah, that looks familiar. <laughs> Did this come from Will Petty and yeah. Centerfish? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so shooting around vehicles, they walk you through how they believe is the most efficient way of exiting the vehicle and what you should be looking for and where you're going from there. Again, based on the de the data that they have and continue to see getting to the rear of the vehicle, if that's a possibility, uh, greatly in increases chances of success. Uh, they discussed their thoughts on the use of cover and conforming to mm -hmm. the shape of your cover where we traditionally will keep ourselves with the cover between us and the bad guy and try and limit that exposure by kind of peeking out of it where they're saying you, if you conform to it, you're actually using yeah. it more, uh, Effectively. You're, yeah. You're, you're putting more of that material, especially when we're talking about columns in a position where it can be cover, mm -hmm. not just concealment. Yeah. So I think that there's, there's a great point in that of if only a piece of this solid object is the cover, the rest of it is providing concealment. How do I use the cover maximally? I think I think it would be a really cool video to show the differences in what it would look like. So mm. the, what becomes cover versus concealment, you know, how much of an advantage is it if you treat, you know, a tinted out vehicle mm -hmm. as cover and just peek out this way? where a round coming through those tinted windows could definitely hit you, but you're hiding yourself from view versus using that pillar this way where maybe you're exposing a little bit more of yourself can be seen, but you're putting that cover at a more advantageous Vital. position yeah. for you. We, we so, should go to the range and do that video. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys are interested in a video on that, drop a comment down below. Let us know this way we can yeah. see if it's something you guys would be interested in seeing. I think I, I'd i be interested in doing it. I just don't know if if there's no demand for it, then we can do it for our own <laughs> our own knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then what? So then we kind of we ran until what? Five, five thirty. Yeah. Something like that. A lot, lot of reps. A lot of reps. A lot of reps. Plenty of plenty of rounds fired in that class. You're. You're learning, learning by doing yeah. for a, for a large portion of that time. And you're going to get your money's worth. Like yes. you are going to shoot a lot and you're going to be moving around a lot. I, I can only imagine with like a smaller class, like mm -hmm. you're probably getting, there's a lot of trigger time. And constructive, constructive feedback on every Throughout round. the entire process. Yep. Yeah. The, um, Blake and Chase, like they know what they're looking for and they know what right looks like. They're, they're really solid mm -hmm. guys. Um, so yeah, so then we wrapped and got dinner with some of the crew, went mm -hmm. out to get barbecue um, at an interesting eclectic barbecue place in rural yeah. Indiana. Um, and then back at it the next day, right out to the range, no mm -hmm. classroom time, day two. Um, I would say we spent probably, what, three hours in the classroom? Two and a half yeah. hours, something like that. Yeah. Um, and then right out to the classroom, day two, uh, or excuse me, right out to the range, day two, and um, got started, mm -hmm. hit the ground running pretty fast. And it might be due to the classroom location and its distance from the range. Oh yeah. yeah. That that may have we may have front loaded all I think of we the did. classroom. Yeah, I think we did. So that we could all just meet at that range day two. But either way there there mm -hmm. wasn't any downtime. We hit the ground running day two and just continued to drill what we had done the day before. So yeah. building block Well I, I think it was kind of interesting is there's a lot of angles to a vehicle. Right. So mm -hmm. as kind of day two started to progress, it was not just the side. It was not just the driver and passenger are facing the same direction. Now we're both getting out. Then we started moving the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Right. So we had vehicles that were sideways. So now what happens if the threat is through the driver's side window mm -hmm. and now being able to shoot kind of in a more compromised position? 
uh, but not having both shooters online. Mm -hmm. And then like kind of angles, if you remember like the one vehicle that was off to the far right, kind of at a 45. So basically day two was everything we did on day one, but then starting to make it more challenging. Different angles, different ways of getting in and out of the vehicle, shooters that are not online to start Mm -hmm. with. They're very big about getting (laughs) all muzzles online. Um, which again is, um, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. There's reasons why they do it. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, getting more complicated throughout day two, I think was, was really yeah. the name of the game foundations day one, and then just starting ramping things up day two. Mm-hmm. And that there was one, one point where we had all the cars out mm-hmm. and all the dudes. Going yeah. Everyone left and right. Different positions. Yeah. I really like that. That was a good drill. Um, yeah. yeah. So for, for like, I guess, to, so you can visualize it. I think we had five, four or five vehicles. Yeah. All set up on different, with different angles, right? Mm-hmm. Some forward, some sideways, some off on 45s. And then they just started shoot, putting people in to mm-hmm. the firing line. And we're like, go find a spot. Yeah. So it was, the idea is you probably... show up to this scene. Mm-hmm. There's an active gunfight. Mm-hmm find a spot and start helping. Yeah. Find work. Yeah, exactly. Find work. Yeah. Um, and then, but before you know it, there's 15 or 20 people across five vehicles or so. Everybody's moving. Yeah. Um, cause that, and then after a certain number of rounds, it was like three to five rounds, start get, finding yeah. a new spot. So, so each, each vehicle had two or three targets yeah. kind of set up, uh, down range of it. And like you said, there was a bunch of different angles and the objective for each student mm-hmm. was to shoot each of the targets. Yeah, that's so. What it was. Yeah. So, like, the first guy through was able to work left to right, <laughs> and someone else was working right to left. But yeah. then, as it started getting more and more crowded, it was like, okay, I got two out of the three off the suburban yeah but now i need to go to the grand prix because there's nothing left for me to do here right now yeah let me go over the grand prix then i gotta fight my way back to the suburban Mm -hmm. to then get that one more bag yeah that's what it was there 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 was a definitely like a logic to it Mm -hmm. um but it was like controlled chaos and i think it introduced a certain amount of adrenaline a certain amount of you know we're moving pretty fast Mm -hmm. Um, but no it was a good it was a really good drill Um, it was probably one of the better vehicle based drills i've seen yes Without a doubt. And then, uh, yeah, and then things got incrementally more complicated. And then we, we finished. We had, I guess, two final things. We we had the teamwork drill with all the things, mm-hmm. all the different targets. I don't know if they like want us to explain that drill very yeah. much. So we'll just say there's a lot of targets yeah. and you're working I think, on a team. I think they call it, is that the alphabet soup one? I think, yeah, that, yeah, whatever that was called. But a lot of targets. Um, and the other thing I actually appreciate from from centrifuge and chase maybe it was a chase or blake thing specifically was there's a lot of attention to detail mm-hmm. right so it, and they didn't hesitate to correct you mm-hmm. um, so i like that i like that precision mm-hmm. y- even if it's not necessarily how we would think about it mm-hmm. or how we would do it in in reality driving towards perfection will give you more of a fudge factor in reality um, so it was very good you know three or four inches here and there made a difference to them yes um, so that, that was, I think very important. So, um, that drill, we'll just call it alphabet soup. I don't remember if that's what they called it. Um, that was a very good drill. That's actually the drill that I saw in video for a local, um, agency mm-hmm. here. Um, I was like, if they're doing that in like the basic Academy, like basic Academy is a awesome. very long way. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. so that was pretty good. And then, um, and then the force on force stuff that we talked about, yeah. that, that was solid too. Yeah. So, uh, just a quick visualization on that. You've got one guy. Toes touching front driver side tire, hands on vehicle, other guy rear passenger side tire, toes touching that, hands on vehicle, uh, fight command or threat, uh, whatever. What, go. What, yeah, go. <laughs> and it's get your gun out and yeah. don't get shot, shoot the other guy. Yeah. And as we all know, sim guns are horrible. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, I mean, there were plenty of cases, right, where you get one round off and it's there's a round and it's, you know, exploded in the chamber. And um, I think at one point I was I was there at slide lock yelling, somebody give me a punch rod (laughs) (laughs) while I'm like trying to maintain this A pillar. (laughs) Yeah. 
I'm like, <laughs> but it, it, it was, was good. It was a good way to also like build some like camaraderie and like yeah. team vibes mm-hmm. um, kind of at the like end of the second day. Um, I think we had a pretty good squad in yeah. general. And it, it let you pressure test some of the stuff mm-hmm. that we had been talking about and repping out for for the two days. Yeah. So very cool to add a force on force aspect to a live fire class. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, it was good. Um, but other than that, I think, you know, that was pretty much a summary of the last of those two days. Yeah. And it was good training. Yeah. Like, it was good training. It was a lot of work. Everybody put in good work. And um, it was a good range. It was a good neighborhood, good town. Like, mm-hmm. I think Bedford's kind of, it was nice. Like, yeah. they had a good barbecue spot. Yeah. So if you get a chance to go up there, whether it's for something like that or another class that 88 range, I think is what it or is. They have a face, 88. range 88. Yeah. They have a Facebook page. You can find it. Yeah. Um, they they do host other classes, so mm-hmm. if you do get a chance, like highly recommended. Yeah, I'm sure it's a good group of guys. So again, I I also would recommend VCQB if you're law enforcement, you have more luxury in the classes you could pick from them. Yeah. If if you're like me and you don't get in the LE only classes, it's LE and Mill. LE and Mill, yeah, yeah. or government. So, Depending yeah. upon where so, you land on that spectrum of three I'm, letters. I'm outside of that spectrum. Yeah. I, I transcend that spectrum. I, I, it is like they do, I think, make it somewhat accessible. So, like, mm-hmm. it's not just LE, right? It's mill or government, however you define that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, there is there is some flexibility there if, if you hold any of those magic cards. But if you see if you see an open enrollment class, book it. It's It's a great class. It should be somewhere on your list. So train with centrifuge VCQB was a good class. I would take that class again. I'd yeah. also be interested in taking other classes mm-hmm. from centrifuge. So that's, that's what we have to say about that class. Go out, get training wherever you get it, who you're getting it from, make sure they're reputable and they're, they're training you in something realistic. But remember, your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.